Now, as you know, you can see Motormouth on Saturday morning at 9.25. But watch out this week for a new game show which is starting, which is called Weird Dreams, because it's giving somebody the chance to win a week in Cairo. Yes, that's one on Saturday morning. Plus, you can see the Ghostbusters, of course. And then on Saturday afternoon, there's the Bungling Magician for some more adventures. That's Mr. Majika, and he's on at 4.15. And then on Sunday, once again, more Motormouth at 9.25, where you can also see Fraggle Rock. So watch out for that this weekend on Children's ITV. Right now, here is... Magic Movie Magic. Hello, you lot. My name is Gaz Top, and this is Lee International Studios at Shepparton. Come with me, and I'll tell you a little bit about it. It really is uh, an extraordinary place. It's probably the most famous film studios in the world outside of Hollywood. They made some wonderful movies here. Uh, have you seen The Omen? That horror classic that was made here. Uh, the Superman films were also shot here. That's uh, Christopher Reeve, you know, we all believe a man can fly, you know the one. What else did they do here? The Pink Panther movies. Yeah, you know Peter Sellers, the late Peter Sellers? Those movies were also made here. They say they can do just about anything here. They can make the audience believe that the film has taken them anywhere in the world. They make the most extraordinary special effects as well. For instance, at Shepparton, they can make me look 200 feet tall, towering over buildings. This is, in fact, the miniature set for the TV series Tugs. The whole thing takes place in a tank, uh, and it's about the adventures of a... Well, a team of boats uh, who live their own independent lives. directors on this. One shoots with a very strong storyboard storyline. The other, who David, who knows the uh, ins and outs of the camera more, is more general in what he tries to do. But at the end of the day, I still try to get some sort of consistency of technique and look. And to a certain degree, also, the characters take over. Well, it's all radio controls. You can see we've got an eight-channel um, transmitter here. And there's servos inside, which operate the eyes and the face. Um, and some of the tugs have got other additions like um, paddle wheels, which turn, and stern waves and things like that. So that we've got, it's all controlled by here. How about the smoke? We've got a smoke machine, uh, which is piped up. How long is the tube then that the smoke comes down? Uh, oh, about 15 feet. We can lengthen them, shorten them to, to suit. We put weights around them so they don't float around in the tank. So when it's actually in there, you don't see where the smoke comes from at all. It just comes out of the tug. Chris, it's, it's, his line is, you took the worst of it, speaking to Warrior. So um, I think this one's just a little bit too uh, haughty, really, what he's got on there. It's, it's not really... It's almost sympathetic. And in somewhat, he admires Warrior now for a change. Each tug has a set of different faces. They're all kept safely in separate boxes uh, to show different expressions. And these faces can be changed at any time to suit the needs of the story. They're made from a, a resin-type substance, a bit like fibreglass. In fact, it's car filler, which you can buy from the shops to mend dents in your car, eh? Clever stuff. If you do see Top Hat, you'll be interested to know that the only reason he rises his head up is because he's a genuine railway tug. And the reason they put their cabins high was so they could see over the top of the railway trucks as he's pushing them along. Tugs actually move quite gently. I mean, they do rock from side to side, but usually they're as solid as a rock. They go up and down a little bit. They're, you know, they're big, heavy boats. So on the, the way we're shooting it, if we stick it on a trolley, it actually looks quite realistic. How much does each tug cost? Can you put a price on them? Several thousand. It took a long time to develop them. It took about nine months to develop each tug, or even the, the fleet of tugs. How long does each episode actually take to finish? Well, 
We've got now down to a 15-day 15, 15 turnaround. Um, that's not allowing for the next episode to come on board. Also, it's gentle on sets. In other words, if we had to change from a, a big town set to this, then obviously you've got a day to change that round. So that would mean your schedule went into 16 days. But what you try to do is finish in 15. It keeps the uh, producer sane. Yeah. <laughs>